I know someone who has collected Waterford crystal for many years. Many of the pieces would have been given to him by, by friends. So if you go into his house, there's displays of them all around in, in different cabinets. A few years ago, I was there for a cocktail party, and when we were served drinks, they were served in plastic glasses. <laughs> and I said to the host, why? Why, when you've got all this beautiful water for crystal, uh, don't you use it? And he simply said, oh, it's too much work. <laughs> How many times do we fail to receive gifts, or we get the gifts, but we really don't use them? Because it takes work. It takes effort on our part. Today's gospel, Jesus is preparing to leave his disciples and he gives them two gifts. The gift of the Spirit and the gift of his peace. And in a sense, we too are given those same gifts. We receive in our baptism and in our confirmation and in other ways this gift of the Spirit. But we have to use it. We have to be aware of it. We have to see the potential that we have to use those gifts of the Spirit in different circumstances in our lives. For example, what's going on in your life that you really could use? The gift that you have, the gift of courage, of right judgment, of understanding, all those different gifts of the Spirit that are potentially ours to use if we call upon them, if we work with them. Someone described the workings of the Spirit in our lives like a baseball glove, say a catcher's mitt. If you put the mitt behind the plate, it's not going to catch any balls, unless you're really lucky. What you need is a hand in it, a catcher, that will enable the, the glove to do what it is intended to do. And the writers would say that the spirit is like the hand in the glove that shapes us and molds us and enables us, in a good sense, to be courageous, to be understanding, to have wisdom, to have right judgment. Jesus also gives his disciples and you and me the gift of peace. And we could talk on one level of that gift of peace being peace in a political sense, in, in our war on terror or in Afghanistan, but Jesus kind of pushes us in a different direction. He says, the peace that I give is not the kind of peace the world gives. My peace is, is different. It has to do with a peaceful heart, a heart that is not anxious or out of control or not being able to deal with what the situation might be in our lives. Again, think of your own life, my life, and how is it that we might welcome this gift of peace if we just work with it, accept it. It might be something to do with family or friends or maybe it's an economic issue or a health issue. We pray today, Lord, give us your peace. As a postscript, I know I've mentioned this before, that a lesson I learned very early in my priesthood was that you take your life in your hand if you don't mention mothers on Mother's Day. <laughs> so, I'm going to mention them. It is a bittersweet day for some. We, we tend to think always in the positive. But for some women, Mother's Day is a reminder that even though they wanted to be mothers, they are not mothers. Or it could be a mother who has recently lost a child. Or an adult who is going through Mother's Day, perhaps this year, for the first time without a mother. So we need to be sensitive to that, but also to broaden our perspective on those who play a mothering role in our lives. Yes, it's our birth mother, but it's also maybe our adopted mother. 
It's the one who has nourished us and nurtured us. It might be a godmother. It just might be a, a health, healthy female working a relationship in our own lives. So we pause this day to honor our own mothers. And we wish them well. We might be praying for them if they've gone before us. Or we might be simply thanking them today for the gift that they have given to us, the gift of life.